early morning hours of our legislature. They passed um, a elections omnibus bill, 2035, and under our Constitution, the citizens can repeal that legislation if they act quickly. And we have um, a period of time to do that. I want you to pay attention to D.J. Quinlan when he gives you the instructions because they've got to be followed extremely carefully. But we have the opportunity to get rid of this relatively egregious or very egregious legislation that makes it a felony to collect um, ballot, early ballots for some, from someone else makes it uh, very, very difficult for a Libertarian or a Green candidate to get on the ballot and makes initiatives um, much harder to put into effect. And we can overturn this if we work together. And so many people will ask me, what can I do to help? Well, this is a very, very concrete thing you can do to help us help the state of Arizona in getting rid of this very, very self-serving right-wing Republican legislation. Our goal as a party is to win elections. And it is imperative that this referendum succeed so that we will be able to win elections in this state. Um, I wanted to devote the majority of my remarks, and uh, we'll try to be as brief as possible, but this requires a little bit of detail to talking about the subject of HB 2305. As Chairman Rowe mentioned, this was an election omnibus bill literally passed in the last hour of the legislative session this, this year. Um, it was something that uh, we fought with the help of our legislators tooth and nail during the entire legislative session. It literally took uh, John Boehner and Rince Priebus, the chairman of the RNC, calling into Arizona at the last minute calling legislators to try to flip some Republican votes to, to pass this at the last minute. So it was, it was rather egregious the way this happened. Um, but, but the good news is that we're gonna fight back. And one of the options we have is that as citizens, we can veto this bill. So that's what we're gonna do. So just a few quick details about this bill and why it's so bad. Um, essentially, there were you know, up to a dozen election bills floating around the legislature um, during the year. There were two of them we were particularly concerned about that pertain to early voting. And as you know, we've put a great deal of emphasis in terms of recruiting low and medium efficacy Democrats onto the permanent early vote list. Um, this is how we've been trying to increase turnout among specific demographics within our party, uh, but also a way to uh, engage people earlier in the election cycle, tell them why it's so important to vote for Democrats. HB 2305 is a recognition of how successful we've been. The Republicans decided that they need to put their foot down now, otherwise they're gonna lose the state. And so they essentially tried to change the, the rules in the middle of the game. The first part of the bill, um, actually allows county reporters to purge voters from the permanent early vote list if they happen to miss, uh, it, it's actually four elections in a row, it's the primary and general in two successive um, election cycles. We actually had to fight to, to make it only those four election cycles. And that sounds kind of interesting that it's four elections in a row, but if, if, if you actually look at the numbers, there's a quarter million voters right now who would be eligible to be purged under this bill if it were to go into law. Into law. Um, Democrats are overrepresented in that group by 10%. Latinos are overrepresented by 20%. Th this is not a good bill. This, this bill will allow them to undo a lot of the work we've done. Some of these folks are people that we need to talk to over and over and over again before they vote. And they're gonna undo that progress that we've uh, worked so hard to get. A secondary part of the bill is, is even more troubling. Look around the room at everybody who's in here today, because under HB 2305, everybody who you're seeing will probably be a criminal. Um, essentially what they did was they 
they made it, first it was going to be a, a, a class 5 felony, they've, they've dwindled it down to be a misdemeanor now, but it's still troubling, um, to actually go and collect an early ballot on behalf of a political party is now going to be illegal. They've yet to offer any explanation why this is necessary. I think for all of us it's pretty transparent. Um, they don't like the fact that we're going door to door and collecting ballots, and they want to put a stop to it, and so they've tried to pass this law. A third, a third part of the bill um, is rather transparent as well. Uh, for those who paid attention to the three competitive congressional elections that were in Arizona in 2012, um, two of the three had libertarians who garnered a substantial, a pretty significant percentage of the vote. Um, in CD9, for instance, my congressional district, the libertarian got more than 6% of the vote. Um, we think that there's actually something going on. If you look at the historical trend when libertarians traditionally got 2 to 3% of the vote, where they're now garnering up to 5 or 6% of the vote, uh, we think that there's actually a conservative protest vote uh, with some of these Tea Partiers who think that their congressional candidates are either too conservative or too liberal, um, and they're voting for libertarians. And so we don't really want to take that away from them. HB 2305 seeks to do that. It, uh, in some cases, increases the signature threshold for Libertarians and Greens to make the ballot by 4,000%. Um, as Democrats, clearly, we think that voting for Democratic candidates is the best choice, but the Republicans want to take away that choice from the voters. And so, as citizens, I propose that we uh, take the vote into our own hands and uh, support this referendum that has come up on HB 2305. Um, there's some other minor changes in the bill that I, I won't bother with the details. Um, there's some good information in the packets that you guys picked up, uh, hopefully uh, uh, when you were registering. If you haven't picked up a packet, uh, I'll give some details here in a little bit as to how you can get a packet. So a little backstory is as soon as this bill passed, we immediately began calling around to all of our allies, seeing what we could do. Uh, flipping through our pocket constitutions, we realized that there's this little nice provision of our very progressive state constitution that allows the citizens to refer any law passed by the legislature to the voters. Uh, and essentially it requires a certain number of signatures within 90 days of signing die. So essentially the bottom line is we have until September 12th to collect uh, roughly 90,000 signatures statewide. It's actually 86,405. There's a committee called the Protect Your Right to Vote Committee that has been formed that has funding primarily through labor, national and local labor groups that will be launching a paid signature gathering effort. They seek to gather all 86,405 signatures themselves. However, I want to challenge the state committee and our party that we can gather just as many signatures as this paid effort, and we can do it for much less. And at the same time, we can re-engage with our neighbors, we can um, start to have a conversation and start to expose what the Republicans are passing in the legislature. So, essentially what I'm proposing is that we take these packets that have been prepared for every state committee member, that, you know, you have a walk list that's been prepared for every single precinct, um, and we go in to our neighbors and collect maybe upwards of 45 signatures each. Um, and then we're not going to stop with the state committee members. We're going to do the same thing with the other thousand PCs who aren't here with us. And then we're also going to engage all of our volunteers from the uh, 2012 election where we had you know, thousands of volunteers statewide.